Now that a vaccine for the COVID-19 virus has become widely available and Americans are eager to resume their normal way of life, many businesses and governments alike are debating the best way to verify who has received the vaccine and who has not. To this end, some are suggesting the use of an electronic vaccine passport for use when traveling or interacting in public. This can include large-scale events such as concerts and festivals, but could also include simply going out to eat or shopping in your local Walmart. Already, giant tech companies Microsoft, Salesforce, and Oracle, in partnership with Mayo Clinic, have formed a coalition called the Vaccination Credential Initiative, which is building a digital copy of immunization records that can be connected to Apple Wallet or Google Pay. But a centralized vaccine passport raises many concerns about freedom and privacy. If this pandemic has taught us anything, it's how quickly our freedoms can be taken away from us in the name of safety, and how swiftly we become acclimated to more and more government intrusion in our lives. The vaccine passport could radically transform our way of life, while creating a technological platform that will almost certainly be used in the future for some of the gravest civil liberty violations America has ever seen. To begin with, the name is a bit of a misnomer. What people mean when they talk about vaccine passport is not the equivalent of documents that are required for international travel. It's an electronic record of your health status that would be required to engage in some of the most basic activities even within your hometown. In New York, Governor Andrew Cuomo has already launched a program known as the Excelsior Pass, an app you install on your phone that tracks your vaccination status and is required to enter venues like Madison Square Garden and Times Union Center. And the Biden administration is working to create a similar program for the whole nation. Israel has already created a massive vaccine passport system, which some dissidents and activists have compared to creating an apartheid state between the vaxxed and the vaxxed nuts. The first objection to a national vaccine passport is that it simply isn't necessary. People are already getting vaccinated faster than doses can be produced. The White House has estimated that by the end of the summer, we will likely have vaccinated 70 to 80% of Americans, with many of the remainder being children. By the time a workable vaccine passport is ready to deploy, we'll have already achieved herd immunity, making the risk to the average person extremely low. It's unclear why we would overhaul the entire way we interact with society for what is likely to be a very minor threat. And it is a major overhaul. Popping a mask on and off while going into a restaurant may be annoying, but it's a temporary inconvenience that doesn't compromise our privacy. A national vaccine passport would take our most personal information, our health status, and medical records, and make them accessible to anyone who wants to look. It may even violate HIPAA and the Americans for Disabilities Act. And once such a system is in place, you can bet it won't be limited to just one use. We can reasonably expect the vaccine passport to expand to cover other medical information such as your annual flu shot, or perhaps even diagnosed mental health conditions that can be used as a basis for excluding service to high-risk customers. It wasn't that long ago when the HIV virus, then poorly understood, appeared seemingly out of nowhere to cause rampant fear and devastation. At that time, Dr. Anthony Fauci incorrectly suggested that HIV could be spread through even casual contact, causing gay men who were at especially high risk for the virus to be hounded and persecuted of their perceived threat to public health. Imagine how much worse it would have been had electronic health passports been used back then. This kind of centralized system is extremely prone to abuse. It's also potentially discriminatory. One of the major objections to things like voter ID is that it disenfranchises those without the resources to obtain the required paperwork. If we require a smartphone app to do something as simple as go to a movie, how does that impact people who don't have smartphones? Or what about those who can't take the vaccine for legitimate medical reasons? Or again, what about people with mental health problems who may lack the wherewithal to use the program? It's easy to see how the poor, immigrants, and those with special medical conditions can slip through the cracks, effectively becoming second-class citizens without access to much of society. And then there's the issues with privacy and Fourth Amendment violations. It almost definitely will create the potential for amassing huge amounts of personal data. Every time your passport is scanned at a business or airport, tech companies will be able to track your movements and interests the stores, concerts, and transportation venues you visit, and much, much more. In the absence of airtight privacy protections, this information could be shared and will be shared for commercial purposes or given to law enforcement agencies. This would affect all of our freedoms, but particularly people of color and immigrants who already fear over-policing. 
It isn't hard to see in the not so distant future how this medical passport app could be integrated with more financial and transportation apps. And a positive COVID result in the app could make it impossible for you to leave your home, catch an Uber, ride a bus to work, or buy groceries or attend a movie. Of course, the architects of these programs are quick to assure us that your information is totally safe and private. They're also quick to insist that participation in the program is voluntary. If a business doesn't want to require a passport for entry, they don't have to, they say. Even if we're prepared to believe that, how long can we expect it to stay that way? Remember, the government has spent the last year aggressively demonstrating that it can and will destroy businesses that don't cooperate with lockdowns. At this point, there doesn't seem to be an explicit threat to get business owners to comply. They will do so in an effort to keep the regulators off their backs and signal to authorities that they are willing to be good out of pure self-preservation. We've seen the dangers of this kind of program before. In China, the government partnered with private companies to implement a social credit system. Starting in 2014, China had been monitoring individual behavior to determine whether someone is being a good citizen or not. Good citizens get to participate fully in society, but bad citizens are denied access to things like train tickets or movie theaters, and their information is publicly displayed to encourage social shaming. What does it take to get on this naughty list? Things like playing loud music, failing to sort your recycling, and protesting the government. Unsurprisingly, China has already begun to implement the vaccine passport as well. It's the kind of mass surveillance system that has made China a civil rights nightmare. Do we really want to take our cues from a regime that routinely engages in persecution of ethnic and religious minorities and violent suppression of democracy? One can look at what happened in China and think that that could never really happen here. Well, I'm here to tell you it already is. The vaccine passport is the technological platform paving the way toward a social credit system. And it's only a matter of time. Giving information about every intimate detail of our lives to this unholy alliance between big tech and government would be the biggest power transfer in human history. We should absolutely resist every kind of centralized system directly or indirectly under government control. A world in which we have to display our medical papers just to eat in a restaurant or go to a show is a far cry from the free and open society that we imagine our country to be. If we don't stand up with one collective voice and say no to these vaccine passports slash social credit platforms, we will end up a totalitarian state like China. It's only a matter of time. This is the hill to die on.